This video is brought to you by PayPal, helping you seize the season when holiday gift inspiration strikes. Shop the globe today. Hello and welcome to Deconstructed, where we take a list that we've already done and break it down entry by entry to see why things placed where they did. Today's list is a big one, it's the top 10 movies of 2017. Before we begin, we want to give a special thanks to PayPal for making this episode happen. Now, let's take a look at the rank. Okay, joining me today on my panel is Matthew Campbell and Eric Cohen. Hey! These are our resident movie experts. This is a, it's a pretty big deal, you guys. Yeah, happy to be here. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Excited. All right, guys. Yeah. A lot of movies this year. A lot of blockbusters. Lots. A lot of blockbusters on yeah. our list, for sure. 2017 Maybe, was a big year yeah. for movies. Maybe not enough indies on there, if I'm being a little picky, but no, it's a good list. Good list nonetheless, but we'll, we'll deconstruct. Yeah, we'll well, deconstruct. but these are movies that Watch Mojo will have definitely seen. The Watch Mojo audience will have seen. Oh, and for sure. One thing I'll say just on Matt's point about indies, there's one glaring omission, as far as I'm concerned, uh, that I would like to talk about, but we'll wait. We'll wait. Uh, oh, yeah. teaser. I think we'll we, okay. we all have a all couple right. of omissions, and yeah. I know some people are a little upset. We've got the comments rolling. <laughs> right, exactly. But let's, oh uh, let's jump right into it. Number 10, Blade Runner 2049. Little comment to lead us in here. Blade Runner 2049 ranked the lowest WTF, man. Well, listen, I understand uh, Denis Villeneuve, the director, is one of the, uh, one of the greatest directors out there right now. I don't think he's done a bad movie to date. Um, I agree. Yeah. And so there was a lot of hype around this movie. Yeah, maybe even a little bit too much. And that might be why it ended up at number 10, because I think so many people were thinking this was going to be the be-all, end-all. Because, you know, th there's so much around that first Blade Runner. There was so much expectation. Yeah, but I just don't think, like... Uh, I, I call this entry why we can't have nice things. Because this oh. movie <laughs> bombed at the box office, right? It did, well, yeah. Because it's bomb. I mean, that's a relative this, term. It did not do yeah, very what, well. It didn't what it was perform expected. nearly as well as they were hoping, right. for Fair. sure. Especially being part of, like, the whole Blade Runner... The lore. Original, the, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I can't say I'm terribly surprised because it's not the type of movie that blows up the box office. Like, like the second comment I have here, uh, which I won't read in its entirety, but it's, it's claiming that, like, why are superhero movies, spoiler alert, there's superhero movies on this list, <gasps> um, why are yes. they placing higher when this was a masterpiece? And yeah. I just think it's... See, I don't know if I would say it was a masterpiece. It deserves oh. to be on there, Interesting. okay? Yeah. I think it was one of the best movies of the year. It looks great. It sounded great. It, yeah. it, it, you know, all the elements were there, and it had that Denis Villeneuve touch. But mm -hmm. when I think about it with a bit of hindsight, it's a little bit like empty calories. Like everything, everything was good about great. it, wow. but it doesn't. It it didn't have that lasting impression that the first movie did. It didn't linger with me uh, the way the first Blade Runner did. And you know, even the casting, uh, fantastic casting. But I've seen better performances by all of those actors. So I. I I don't That's interesting to say because when when Denny was filming the the, the film with Ryan, mm -hmm. he was saying like, "Oh, Ryan was my muse for this. He helped me kind of like not regain the love for cinema, but like amplify it even more really? so." So what? it's interesting that yeah, yeah. I can't yeah. believe that anyone would be inspired by Ryan Gosling except to maybe like go to the gym. And oh. and of all people, Denis Villeneuve, who yeah, is such who is a like, yeah. yeah, who's at the the top the thing, of his game right now. The yeah. thing about Denis though, I don't think he's got that street cred yet. Like if you drop a name like it's the new Tarantino movie, like. Everyone and their grandmother knows who right. that is. That kind of makes sense. I think he's almost there, and like he's building that filmography to reach that level. I think if you're super, super into film, you'll you'll know. But I I kind of agree. Yeah, he's he's almost there though. If you're in like main pop culture kind of well, aspect. word has it he's doing the next uh, Dune. Yes, he's doing a Dune reboot. So totally yeah. down for that. We'll see what yeah. happens. But again, cult sci-fi. I'm not sure exactly. that's going to put butts in seats, yeah. but it's going to look gorgeous. Yeah. yeah, let's go next entry. Okay, Thor Ragnarok. With the success of this movie and the relative less success of Justice League and the fact that Justice relative. League was recut to have more humor in it, mm -hmm. is it safe to say that the, uh, the gritty superhero movie era has come to an end? Well, this is certainly, I mean, you know, Thor was hilarious. I think um, 
you know, and, and largely due to director Taika Waititi. Yes. Uh, you know, he mm -hmm. put that, that humor, and if you look at his earlier stuff, you knew exactly what you were getting with I'm this. not actually familiar with what he's done before. What is it? Oh, uh, uh, what, what We, we do, do in the Shadows. shadows. Oh, right. hilarious yeah, yeah, yeah. vampire movie. Yeah. Uh, mockumentary. Mockumentary. A mockumentary. Exactly. And I was actually saying in my review that when Thor came out, and, uh, you know, it, it would have been hilarious if Thor was a mockumentary. Right. You know, if, if he had taken it that wow. way. But that's deviating it a lot, <laughs> if that were to be the case. But, but I, interesting. I interesting. think superhero movies yeah. are going that direction. Um, and in fact, even after having seen that, now Kathleen Kennedy from Lucasfilm has said she'd like to see um, Taika Waititi uh, tackle a Star, Star Wars film. Wars. Mm. So everyone is appreciating this kind of new humor. I like it. I everyone, though? Because I think oh. I got a, I got a oh, comment from a comment. Samuel Keller. Huh? I won't read the whole thing because okay. Samuel fancies himself a bit of a critic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but he uh, he didn't like the humor. It was it was too too much. He found it grating, um, and he felt there was no. Uh, no emotional gravity and stilted humor, so he thought it was a disappointment. I would maybe kind of agree with that. I mean, if you're a fan of, of Taika, you, you know exactly what you're getting, and I am a fan of his. Mm -hmm. So the comedy, st stupendous, right? But I'm also a big fan of like the first original Thor mm -hmm. and Kenneth Branagh. He kind of had this whole like Shakespearean, very like Absolutely. serious tone to it, and I like that about the character. Did I like that like he was like. One? Mm, no, second, second one is garbage. Forgettable is all yeah. Right, exactly. But in the first one, like I was saying, it's 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 Shakespearean. It's serious in tone. The character, um, you, it, he so just you wasn't the same. You know, you would have appreciated a little bit more of that serious tone. I think in so this. because it's like almost a complete 180 from the Thor we we we, we grew grew up to to know within the first two movies, right? Yeah. So, but I think they took uh, they took the recipe from. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, and they're oh, like, "Well, sure. let's just let's just apply this. Yeah. This clearly, this works. It was yeah. colorful. It was funny. It moved at a fast pace, um, and the music. I mean, just that song. Yeah. You know, it, uh, I think it was a great entry into the Marvel universe, and I think it actually puts Thor. You know, because Thor was kind of like the the, the lesser man yeah. superhero. For he was always you know? the odd man out kind of good yeah. addition to the team, but a little confusing as to how he could carry his own movie. Not confusing, right. but." You know, not necessarily the greatest centerpiece character. Yeah. And now I think he's, I he's recalibrated that. I would actually have put this higher up on the list. Interesting, mm. Matt. Where do you where do you stand on where it's placed? Um, you know what? Uh, I'm we not gonna spoil we got anything. But coming. that's it. There is another superhero movie ahead of it. I might have placed this one. Is it Justice ahead. League? No, we'll see. We'll it's see. But th Thor might have been ahead of the next one to come up. There's I'll leave it at few. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Moving right along because we got a lot of superheroes to talk about today. <laughs> Wonder Woman. This was the big surprise, I think, this year. Uh, of all the movies we've got on the list, I think, yeah, maybe. The one that most people are just like, wow, it's actually good. Who yeah, be be because yeah. DC has not delivered a good movie. Finally uh, a home run for them. <laughs> right, you know, exactly. Let's give them a, a small round of applause, you know. But uh, is it they deserved? Because then they, they swerved right off course again with, uh, with Justice League. Well, it was Except deserved. Except for the Wonder Woman parts. It was deserved for that film, for sure. But you think they would try and use that momentum and kind of use that, that formula, not necessarily formula, but just, you know, that, that kind of storyline aspect and, and put it towards the next one. But Well, this was entertaining. They just can't do it. Here's yeah. the thing. I, when watching Justice League, I didn't think Gal Gadot was very good. Mm. <laughs> but and she was very good in Wonder Woman. But she's fantastic in Wonder Woman, yeah. which I think is more credit to Patty Smith? Not Patty. Patty Jones? Uh, Patty Jenkins. Patty Jenkins. Patty so Jenkins. close, so close. Yeah, almost. <laughs> All power to the director because she knew how to use For Gal Gadot sure. to her strengths. Right. That, and I think this movie succeeds because it all it felt like a single cohesive movie the whole way through. That didn't feel, feel like it was recut. It didn't feel like focus groups were pulling it in different parts. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, and I they didn't give it have to, to CGI Pine. anyone's mustache out. <laughs> That's right. This is true. Chris Although, Pine did a really good job in that. He, I think he's maybe an underrated uh, I, comedic actor. I agree. Uh, Not just comedic, but just actor in general. Under, underrated yeah. presence on he's, screen. He's starting to, to get up there in terms of, of his acting prowess, I think. Yeah. He yeah. busted in at the wrong time. There's a lot of hot white Chris's. Yes, <laughs> yes. Just like yeah. hot white you guy named Chris. You can't name all of them. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. You, I mean, you could, they're pumping them out of a mold. That's true. He's um, even, like, <laughs> lost amidst all the Chris's. There's That's so what many, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Between Hemsworth and Evans, he's just like, hey, guys, I can, I can do comedy, too. I'm funny. Yeah. <laughs> but um, another thing, I, I, it's hard not to gawk over Gal Gadot, and I don't want to spend the entire review, but watching that movie, it's 
believable that she is a demigoddess from another world. Absolutely. The casting was perfect, and she, she really killed it in this movie. I, I agree with you, though, that in Justice League, I mean, she was still good, but not as great. No. As, like, not uh, as magnetic. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. No. And, like, and she even mentions that in an interview afterwards, too, that, you know, Justice League didn't get Wonder Woman, uh, didn't get Wonder Woman right. So, there were a couple I mean, of shots that were a little bit, there were some creep shots. Like when she goes to meet Cyborg or something like that, and it's like, look at her butt. Yeah. And there I was, was just none like, of that with don't Patty get me Jenkins. wrong. Yeah. Everyone loves a little butt, but right. I'm just like, well, it was. It's just a bit out of place. I don't know. But there was, there, there was girl power there. It, it, was, it was, you know, um, th- there was a feminist undertone to the movie itself, and I For think sure. it, it, it accomplished that really well. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and it was entertaining. So it didn't feel like it was hitting us over the head. Right. I gotta say, uh, I thought the fight at the end is a little anticlimactic. I thought, like, the fight yes. against Ares. Um, I did like that they a... actually did tie it into the whole Ares thing because mm-hmm. they kind of trick you. Is he a real thing? Is he not? Especially with those two worlds kind of clashing together. Absolutely. But I'm, I am glad they brought that in there. I will say, though, that some of the CGI I felt was not very not the great. Greatest. But um, I did like the final fight. Um, I forget his name. I think it's David Thewlis who plays the, the villain, but he was yeah. great. He was um, fantastic. Yeah. He's great. I, yeah. This is why I wouldn't put Wonder Woman any higher. I just thought like it's, it's commendable for how well it does a very difficult character and how cohesive mm-hmm. the movie is. But as far as like a grand superhero story, it felt a little bit been there, done that. Number seven, Baby Driver. Now, I am not familiar with that superhero. Hey, oh, hey, 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 oh. <laughs> He's kind of a hero in this, though. He is. A little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And Edgar Wright, I mean, right. has he done, a, a bit like Denis Villeneuve, has Edgar Wright done a bad movie? Can you think of anything? Couldn't that name one off the top yeah. of my head. No, he's I couldn't just, name any of his movies off the top of my head. Well, just he kidding. Did. Okay. Just kidding. Right, right. right. I mean, no, I still. No, I don't think so, man. Uh, I don't you know, think so. Yeah. Look at Hot Fuzz. Look at Shaun of the Dead. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what, the trilogy. What's it called? The uh, Cornetto trilogy. Cornetto right. trilogy. Yeah. Uh, everything he's done has been really good. Apparently, well, what was uh, Ant Man? He wrote but didn't direct. Ant right? Man was so much fun. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So but, yeah. Baby Driver. Baby, Baby Driver. Driver. Um, it's him doing a. You know, a, a genre film, a, a car driving, you know, classic yep. uh, getaway movie. It's definitely different, obviously, very different than the Cornetto trilogy, mm-hmm. but it still has those very uh, obvious Edgar Wright isms, if you will. You mm-hmm. know, just like the music. The, the music, the pacing of the shots, the way the camera follows his characters, um, just the, the fluidity of the, of, the, of the movements and everything. Uh, it's it's well, great. The, the, the technical execution is flawless in this movie, and, and, it's, yeah. and it's so stylistic. Um, and like you said, the music, you know, the, there's the way that the movie kind of flows based on the music. Right. I, right. I'm curious about something, though. Would you say that, you know, is it fair to say, is, is there a comparison that could be made to the movie Drive? Oh. oh, is that what you guys are coming with me <laughs> right, for? Exactly. Yeah. Well, it's funny. Uh, it's funny that you say that because what I was about to say is often with movies like this, I get a bit frustrated because I feel like the entirety of uh, the support the movie gets is based around the style of the movie. Right. Mm-hmm. And I feel like there's not a lot of substance once you stripped, like, I think <laughs> people so are just- That's funny that we're just talking about the style the whole first <laughs> yeah, part exactly. of it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is yeah. why I'm like, I'm sitting on deck with my question here. Um, yeah. No, like, okay. B- b- Big confession here, I don't like Drive. I he hates dri- Drive. I hate Drive. Or I, I thought Drive was massively overrated. I thought it was a big wink. Great oh movie. Boy. Um, I don't know what you're Oh, boy. About. Oh, boy. Anyway, uh, but Let I liked Baby Driver talking. more because I mm. thought this movie was actually, like, fun to watch. Yeah. And things like That's happen. what I mean. Is, is it the fun version of Drive? Um, I mean, well, I mean, Drive was just a relentless slog of terrible indie music. So. Oh no, don't say <laughs> that. I mean, they're definitely <laughs> like very the- different movies, obviously. Right. I mean, um, if you're looking at it as uh, from a surface kind of level, obviously they're very right. similar. Young guy, driving getaway, um, finds girl, girl gets in trouble kind of thing. You but know? also the music um, and the fact that it is a stylistic movie more so than, mm, a, you know, and story driven. And that's what I have to sort of tell myself a lot is that like, the style and the way the story is told is the point. Exactly. Yeah. Like you can't, yeah. you couldn't do this with, I don't know, uh, Wes Anderson or something. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. Whoa, well, don't get me started. I, I feel about Wes Anderson the way you feel, right. about, feel uh, about, about Drive. Drive. Well, no, I don't hate Wes Anderson. I, there's certain movies. Hmm. That's another discussion for another time. Yeah. What I did find interesting about Baby Driver, though, is the marketing. It kind of, um, you know, it didn't come out as a big blockbuster movie. It kind of 
came out of nowhere and really got accolades all over the place. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, it, it was interesting how it, you know, it spread like wildfire, but it, it wasn't necessarily promoted as such. But I feel that's a lot, a lot of it has to do because it, like, it's not like Drive in that sense. You know, it's, it's Edgar Wright, so he has that fan base right away. Yep. Um, and it's a very accessible movie. It's probably, you know, like, it might be the funnest movie I've seen all year. It's Maybe just, on the list, it's, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's, um, it's really fun. The driving is insane. Um, and, you know, it's, I, there's not much more else to say than it's a fun movie. The writing is actually really good. Um, Ansel Elgort's character, Baby, um, actually has a lot of depth to it. And you learn a lot about his backstory, which is really sad. Like you relate when he to converted him easily. to Apple instead of Android and stuff like that? <laughs> <laughs> bang on. Yeah. Bang on, Dan, yeah. You know, but, I mean, that's it. It's just a really fun movie. And yeah. you get the feeling that everybody who was on set had a blast. Yeah. Like, it looked like yeah. a lot of fun to shoot. Yeah. Um, at number seven, would you guys move it up, move it down, keep it right where it is? I'm, I'm good with it at seven. Good at seven? I maybe would have moved it up a little higher. Maybe, maybe six, maybe top five. Maybe baby. May, may, maybe baby would have made a top five, but there are some others on there that didn't make the top five that I do feel should have made the top five. Oh, I see. So maybe I'll go with baby driver six. All right. I would have maybe moved it up You'll one spot. You'll let us know when we get to those, right? Exactly. Okay, mm -hmm. fair we'll enough. Do. It. it. No. It. Wow. Wow. This Did you guys was, expect this to be good? You know what? When that trailer dropped and it broke all those records, I was like, there's no chance this movie is going to be bad. It's, really? It was perfectly cut. Yeah. I, I, and uh, Andy, Andy Muschietti, I was really excited to see what he would do. Um, yeah, he kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, I just thought it was riding the whole, like, Stranger Things, 80s resurgence, and the uh, scary There were a lot of clowns. similarities. Yes. I, well, okay. Okay, no. Um, the similarities to Stranger Things, I think you cannot fault this movie for because Stranger Things is heavily derivative of Stephen King's stuff. So exactly. exactly. So it was, exactly. it was Goonies, it was Stand By yeah. Me. Right. It was referencing, uh, you know, kind of a time and a place that movies often reference. Um, yeah. And, and, and yes, Stranger Things is, you know, the zeitgeist of that right now. Yeah. But it, um, you know, I saw it with our director, Manny, and, and we just kept on poking each other going, Bro, did you see that? Oh my That's God. That's it. it. It's just an extremely fun movie. I said Baby Driver was maybe the most fun movie I've seen all year. Taking it back. Uh, it maybe it might be tied, but it as as scary as it was, as 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 kind of gruesome as some scenes were. Oh, man. It's just an yeah. all-out fun thrill ride. Um, and you know what? If 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 it did tackle that '80s nostalgia in a way that it relied on it way too heavily, then yeah, I'd agree. Like, oh, it's just it's just riding that wave. You know, they're just capitalizing on what's cool, what's popular right now. But it's just such a small aspect of the film. You know, it it, it sets the mood, it sets the tone. But this this movie stands alone on on how great the kid characters are, how great the story mm. is, and Pennywise is fantastic. Amazing. I guess there's no excuse He's to so have, scary, but so good. Yeah. There's no excuse to have terrible child actors anymore, is there? Because like child actors have just become so good. That's yeah, true. Yeah, that's it. That's like, it. It's, like between, I, I hate to bring it up again, but between Stranger Things and mm -hmm. this, like there's just a good crop of youngsters. Yeah, totally. Who know how to scare. Another yeah. movie, uh, Super 8. We won't talk about Super 8 too long, but they were like, crazy young kids. Now Elle Fanning's like one of the the biggest that's actresses right, yeah. in the business right now. So I mean, that's yeah. It's totally. like the young Brat Pack. One thing yeah. I will say about it though, it sets the you know that first scene. Oh my God! You know when when the the little kid goes. Oh, Georgie! And he's, oh my God! Like, what Man. happens? And we won't spoil anything, but like you know that it, it's it's the initial scene, and and it just sets the stage for exactly what you're gonna get with the movie. I was not expecting that. No. Whatsoever. No. Oh a my blood God! Blood splatter. I'm just gonna say a little bit of splatter. And then it calling out her brother's name. We oh. won't say too much yeah. in case you haven't if seen you haven't it. Seen but oh. it. Yeah. Um. But so you got were you guys scared? Because my two comments here from. The New Pact Entertainment's Zone and oh, right. Kapilesh 14, mm -hmm. two big names on YouTube, really. Yeah. Uh, both of them are basically telling me that the, the movie's not scary. They said it wasn't you know, scary. You know no, what? The, the, um, the practical effects that they used of, of, the, the, of Pennywise coming at you, mm -hmm. uh, there, there were some really good jump scares. I, I agree, but I would also agree with the comments. It's not, it's not really that scary, in my opinion. It definitely okay. has its moments, but... I definitely feel it's more of just like, you know, uh, Steven Spielberg, Stephen King kind mm -hmm. of like adventure movie with, with some scares sprinkled through, you know? I guess, yeah, that's what I'm left with. 
uh, you know, with, with some hindsight and w with some distance, I'm left yeah. more with that, yeah. with the excitement than the scares. Because you're not going to get scares like in The Conjuring or, you know, any classic kind of 80s movies, you know, like Halloween or, or Freddy, you know. Um, but I find it's more the adventure that, that's really fun about this movie. And there's another one coming up. Yeah. yeah. Do you yeah. think that's going to be as successful? No kids or less kids. Less kids. Because it's the second half of the book, right? Right. Yeah. That's, in that's an interesting question, and it's always so tough to live up to an original that does so well, right? So but they, they've set the bar up really high. At this point, it's the sequel to It, right? right? Which was the most, it was the most successful horror movie? Or R-rated, yeah. Or, 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 most successful R-rated movie, or what was I'm it? I'm not exactly sure, but most successful something, yeah. We'll it's an very successful movie. It's broken a lot of records, yeah, like opening weekend for yeah. horror movie, or yeah. maybe like opening R-rated, something like that. I remember it beating Deadpool at, at the box office, too, so. It came right. out I mean, at the right time, too. Yeah, I mean, the, the sequel's definitely going to succeed financially, whether critically, Let's hope. still up in the air. We'll I see. have really high hopes. I think it will. Because I loved it, and I think it should be higher on the list. Okay. I do too. I do so too. higher than you, you wanted in the top five, because we're about to crack the top five. Yeah, that's should right. Be top five that, sure. This is the movie I was alluding to that should have made the top ah, five. Ah, there we go. All right, yeah. well, let's uh, slice into it with our next entry. Logan. Now, Eric, just before we started filming, you said you had a hot take on this movie. I'm curious. I think maybe it should have been number one. Number oh, one. Okay. I don't know. I mean, I I, I, I was thinking I, more negative hot take. No, this, this maybe, is yeah. This maybe I could. I, maybe I'll get on board with this. Let's see what you have to say. I, I like our number one, which we'll get to. But um, this movie, I mean, talk about turning a superhero genre on its head. Uh, you know, when you have, um, you know, the the way they treated the characters, uh, you know, Professor X in this movie is just not what you expect. Oh man, and so vulnerable. That was yeah. yeah it's that hard to really watch. shook me up. Yeah, a like lot when, of the time. When he's in the car and he's just like, basically like, you just know, a sick old man. Yeah. It, and, and swearing. I mean, putting, you know, <laughs> when he's like, <laughs> right. you know, talking, you know, swearing like a trucker in this movie, you know, uh, like an old invalid trucker, I was like, <laughs> no, and, 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 you know, not to mention Logan. I, uh, you know, another hot take. I liked the girl, the, the, the other. She was great. But, um, uh, you know, I. Take her or leave her. I have. I'm. I was much more focused mm. on Logan and uh, and Professor X. Yeah. Well, your take isn't so hot, Eric, because two comments: Dead Seven O Two and Levi Melton both protest that it should have been number one. Oh, there you go. Yeah. See, that's why I, I thought it was more negative. But uh, are I, you that's on board? I, yeah. I don't know about number one, but I did love it. I did feel. Uh, I remember going into it. Everyone's like, "Oh, this is kind of like." Marvel's answer to The Dark Knight, and going into it, I guess I set the bar a little high, mm -hmm. but I didn't leave thinking it was bad. I just didn't think it was maybe as great as everyone was saying, but it's definitely one of my favorite Marvel movies. I love the fact that they kind of took the superhero genre and kind of, like you said, flipped it on its head. It was more of like a neo-Western than, mm -hmm. you know, than like a sci-fi fantasy kind of superhero movie, which I totally loved. A little bit more grounded in reality, which is what I tend to look for in superhero films, but Dan's My take, shaking man, his head. Well, here's the thing. Yeah. I thought it was a fantastically well-made movie that I did not enjoy. You didn't wow. like it? Okay, well, here's the thing. That's your hot I thought take. It was, yeah. I, yeah. That's a hot take. <laughs> no, it's not that, like, I thought everything was amazing, and, like, finally getting the swearing and Wolverine using his claws the way they actually would work. Right. Um, all of that, great. Just the movie was such a friggin' downer. Like they it's, stop yes. and help the family with the horses. They yeah. should have let those horses get hit by trucks, and then the oh, family would have lived. Yeah. Like not oh. to mention what else happens in that house to one of the beloved characters, <sighs> but we won't say. Oh no, man. No, it's like I, I just I felt sad and it shook is. after the movie. Yeah, but that's what a good movie is supposed oh, to fair. do. That's and yeah. I'll I'll say this. You know, at, uh, off the top, we talked about how many superhero movies are on this list. Yeah. I had forgotten about this as a. Because it's This not is a, not a superhero movie. And I think maybe. This is a hot take, and I think maybe that's why I like it so much. Yeah, exactly. Because it's not like a superhero movie. This is not. But I don't even think of it as part of the Marvel universe. Yeah. So, so you know, k kudos to the producers. Yeah. They, they Gentlemen, would you say that people are sick of these big superhero movies? Mm -hmm. The big sick, uh, probably the biggest outlier on this list. Like it's yeah, for the sure. most indie film, I'd say. Yeah, uh, probably the only a, indie movie. It's on a it. yeah. dramedy. Comedy drama? Yeah, I would say probably yeah. the only. Uh, I would even think of it as a as a comedy. And yeah, it's the only the only comedy on this list, really. If you don't count four, right? That's a exactly. Good point. Yeah. yeah. Um, but this is comedy drama, so yeah, it's yeah, drama. There you go. Let's Absolutely. call it maybe the most authentic movie on this list as well. 
I mean, it really plays. It's a yeah. true story. It's yeah. um, uh, not a lot of Norse gods or, <laughs> no, or Amazon. No hammers. Or, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It feels very relatable. And, and you know, in, in some ways, even though Apatow didn't direct it, he produced it. And it right. does. And, and that's something that, that is really present in most of his movies is something that, that everyone can kind of relate to. Yeah, it's but this movie's good. Sorry? As opposed to Apatow's other movies. Which are? I, I mean, the bad ones, all his the other bad movies. One, yeah. I'm well, sorry, I'm not thing, a big fan. Oh, the thing, my, go, my, okay. my take on Apatow is always his movies have like a good premise, mm -hmm. yeah. but no actual story. It's like, and what if an ugly schlep got a woman pregnant? Oh, right. and then the movie yeah. just kind of... It's oh, interesting it you bring that up, though, because like you were saying, it is obviously a Judd Apatow production, and it does have like those little bits of flavor of an Apatow mm -hmm. production, but because it is grounded in like a true story, and it is a pretty sad story at that, you know, guy meets girl, girl falls into a coma, is super sick. Um, yeah, but then they, get, they, they, they end up getting married and making a movie about themselves. That's true. But my, my main point being, you know, you can't have that kind of like raunchy R, R comedy kind of comedy that Apatow no. is known for in a movie that is this emotional, right? It obviously has little bits of it, but it's not going to go full on Judd Apatow. And that's why I think it's more relatable. People went to watch it and, and fell in love with it. Yeah. It's, it's pretty expert, uh, expertly done in terms of tone. Like yes, the they walk that line. comedic parts don't undermine or like right. shift gears too hard for the uh, the drama. Right, and not just the drama, but there's also you know the the the, the sense of the the issues that it tackles mm. are you know it, it's stuff that people deal with, especially in America right now. Yeah, there's, totally. Uh, you know, it, it, there's a lot of intolerance issues, and mm -hmm. and uh, you know it kind of it 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 very gracefully deals with pretty heavy issues yeah. and, and and it comes out you come out of there feeling the sweetness of it all right not to give too much away but there's a scene like uh, Kumail Nanjiani's character is a stand up comedian in the movie mm -hmm. he's doing a set um, and his girlfriend's parents are in the audience and the relationship is like not the best between them but then someone starts heckling and then one of the parents you know stands up says a few things and that's it you know it it deals on issues that are really prevalent today and, and people relate to that. And I think that's why so many people, or the people that did end up seeing it in the end, really like just fell in love with the movie. Yeah. And Ray Romano. And, and oh, Ray, Ray Romano. Romano's redemption. Yeah, Did totally. he need redemption? He was amazing in that movie. He was hilarious. Um, and you know, I mean, the whole fact that his daughter was very sick, you really kind of felt bad for him. You empathized with him, which really helped you kind of connect with the character. But definitely great roles. You know, one of those best since uh, Everybody Loves Raymond. So. Right, it's only since Everybody yeah, exactly. Loves Raymond. Yeah, right. exactly. Ice Age. <laughs> oh <my God>. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. So at number three, we got another little indie flick that kind of flew under the radar. Hmm. Uh, Star Wars, The Last Jedi. Star Trek? Jedi. What do you mean, Star Trek? <laughs> no, Star Wars. Huh. It's, I it's, haven't heard of it. It's a smaller franchise. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, people are upset with this movie. Upset. Pe it's, people are upset with it. But I mean, movie aside, it's just so strange how the critics are so in love with it. It's 90 plus on Rotten Tomatoes. But then it's weird. I don't know how honest it is, I think but it's that's weird how, bombs. you know. Yeah, exactly. I think that's a big old the critics, review bomb. Or not the critics, the fans. The fans are, seem disappointed. But it, it is possible that, I mean, you know, my feeling uh, after seeing it was I don't quite know. I want to be so excited because it's a really good right. movie. But mm -hmm. you know, I felt that with the Force, when, when the Force Awakens came out, it was reigniting my love yeah. and passion of the Star Wars universe. Because right. um, you know, I'm of a generation where I saw the first ones and then mm -hmm. really didn't like the prequels. I know a lot of you love the prequels. I'm, I, I apologize, uh, but that's just how I feel. They they weren't good. Right. Yeah. Um, and then <laughs> and then the Force Awakens comes out, and I was like, yes, they got it right. The, the, everything's in place. And mm -hmm. so this, you know, I saw it, and I was like, it's really good. But we're maintaining a file. We're, we're not creating a new fire. So it's. It's hard to get as excited, and so that might be a little bit, a little bit of the malaise that we're feeling. It's interesting things. that you say like cre it's not creating a new fire because I think one of the reasons um, so many people loved The Force Awakens was because it was like a storyline that we were familiar with, mm -hmm. and it didn't deviate too much away I from the Star the Wars. Big, I thought that was the big criticism See, of it. That was what, like, also it's criticism, same. but I, I'm, I'm trying to trying to lead trying to lead it into my point here with the uh, with the Last Jedi. People, a lot of the criticisms I'm reading and, and seeing are like. It's not a Star Wars movie. It just doesn't feel like a Star Wars movie. It's so different. Well, I think that's the most commendable aspect of it. They take it they, be, right? they take yeah. some bold moves yeah, with absolutely. the Star Wars canon, uh, and they there's definitely 
shots in the movie that you know are clearly just ripped, like they just traced over yeah. the uh, the storyboarding, you know, like yeah. some of the Battle of Hoth stuff that they put in at the end there. But at the same time, I just, I think this movie had better highs than The Force Awakened and a few lower lows. Okay. And it's a bit uneven. I, I think you can cut 15, 20 minutes out of that movie and mm -hmm. it might have been tighter. But I think the emotional payoffs were better in this movie. Right. Well, there were so many, you know, emotional climaxes. Yes. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, ultimately I feel that this movie is just literally passing the torch from, you know, the older generation to the right. newer generation. Yeah. But one thing that, that we should mention is that I think this was the hardest one to place in the top ten. We, we had internal discussions, um, you know, because well, it's Star Wars, does it just end up at number one? Or, you know, is it not that great, so should we put it lower on the list? When we, um, when we were doing, we've already done a TV episode, top 10 TV shows of 2017, deconstructed, check it out. <laughs> um, but when we were ranking it, I was like, Game of Thrones is like the, it's the Star Wars of, of TV now. Yep. It's like, it's this cultural phenomenon. And the question, the, the question becomes just where are we gonna put it? Right, mm -hmm. it's a hard one to deal with because it, it, you know, it's reputation precedes it, so it's hard to know um, where this stands in the Star Wars universe. And, and, yeah, and, exactly. And, and now we can we can talk all day just about this one. I think we actually did have a big old review. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can check out our review. Just right now, though, number three, higher, lower, anywhere else. What do you think? I'll switch it with Logan. You'll switch it with Logan. You yeah. would, huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. I think three. You know, it, it's one of the most recent on uh, one of the most recent movies to come out on so this list fresh. as well. So it's fresh, and I think that has a lot to do with why it makes the top three. Mm -hmm. I think maybe in a little bit, like with a little hindsight, maybe we'd want to peel it back, mm -hmm. um, especially because there are a few omissions on this list too that would rather maybe, not maybe in place of it, but you know, um, put a little higher than it. Um, three might be a bit high, but time will tell, I guess. Time yeah. will tell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Will we? Uh, yeah, we'll be vindicated by by the uh, by history. And yeah. we're going to get a lot of comments, I'm we sure. Are, yeah, most of the comments, uh, all the comments are going to be about Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, and, and why Thor wasn't funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, let's go. Dunkirk. I have my opinions, but I want to hear your takes first. Christopher Nolan? <laughs> Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan. I'm a oh, huge yeah? fan. Right. Okay, you know yeah. what? You guys drew me out. I'm, t I'm taking my hot take now. Uh oh right. I think Christopher Nolan makes beautiful looking movies that take themselves so damn seriously that people think they're better than they are. Oh. W would you like to see a comedy by Christopher Nolan? Is that Absolutely not, because <laughs> no. I don't think the guy knows how to laugh. That's, oh, that's, that's a hot take. I'm a big fan, but that's probably pretty fair, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think he'd ever I just think all of his movies, um, because they have this gravitas to them and they're gorgeous looking, they all, he loves that muted color palette, no <laughs> hard reds in these movies, never a hard red, always just gray and blue. <laughs> Uh, you're just like, I think people get kind of whipped up in this style. I thought Interstellar was oh, like... Oh no, don't. I th anyway, you know okay. what? I thought Interstellar <laughs> is a conversation for another yeah. day. But Dunkirk, it was a good movie. Well, it was uh, good. Listen, in, in the scope of war movies, you know, mm. the idea is to communicate that war is hell. And right. I think it served its purpose absolutely that way, and it looked beautiful. Yep. You know, the, 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 the sound design, the, the, the music from Hans Zimmer, um, yeah. It puts you in this sense that you're like, you know, I, I remember before it came out, I went to see another movie and they just showed a 13 minute clip. They literally just took 13 minutes of one of the dog fights. Uh, okay, yeah. And, and I was just like this in my seat right. going. Tom Hardy, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Who's, I mean, he's just acting with his, yeah. always acting just with his eyes. Um, it's insane how good he is with his eyes. But that's also another conversation for another day. <laughs> I but, uh, have a theory that that part was added afterwards. Very like, possible. Wow. With the dog fights. Because if you think about it, none of that actually like touches the ground. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's, that's just my opinion. Mm. Um, but, but you know, I, I think a movie like this, clearly you're supposed to see in the theater on 70 millimeter film. Yeah, um, so, that's what I did. You know, it's, it's got a short life in mm. that, you know, people, I don't encourage people to watch it on the small screen uh, in their homes. It's yeah. back in IMAX actually. At, at date of recording this, it's, it's back in IMAX and that's when I went to go see it. So oh. I saw it just right. recently. Okay, cool. You see, you say it kind of shows the horrors of war. I found it, it kind of pulled punches. Like every so often, like a lot of the horror is implied. In yes, the movie. exactly. Now, I don't need the most gut-wrenching violence, but I just felt like this movie is, here in Canada, it's rated G. Yeah, like, exactly. You know, like not advised for small children. Yeah. So I felt, 
I felt it got up to the edge, but it never kind of tipped over well, to make the, me the really thing, like because, <gasps> love it. Yeah, uh, and especially when you think of like all the great war movies, you, you think of Saving Private Ryan, The Thin Red Line, you know, Platoon, um, Platoon all rated R films. So I remember when uh, when Nolan said that Dunkirk was going to be PG-13, everyone was freaking out um, because you you can't. Put, you, you're, you know, supposedly you can't have a great war movie without blood or guts or explosions or this and that. But I still think he managed to make, honestly, you know, one of the top five best war movies of all time, even with that rating, because um, other war movies tend to show soldiers as heroes, and you know, a lot of them are. But also, you know, soldiers are also 17, 18 year old kids who don't want to be there, who are terrified and who are looking for ways out. And that's what the horror of this movie is, is not necessarily people. No one's fighting left back. And no, right. one's, no one's even pointing a rifle. That's right. It's You're just, just watching. It's this immense vulnerability. Exactly. exactly. And it's yeah. the suggestibility. If you can suggest the horror of something without showing it, then I think exactly. you've done an even better job. Yeah. And I'd also be just remiss to, to, to not mention how amazing Christopher Nolan is with dealing with, with the passage of time. You know, like Memento, mm -hmm. Inception, oh, and now nice. Dunkirk told from like three different time period, not time periods, but three different times over three, three different, different tempos. Yeah, even. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I just think he did that masterfully. So, Dan, again, is, is not so sure. <laughs> you know, I, I, I defer to our movie experts here and the guys back in the guys and gals back in the office who ranked <laughs> right. this. I, I think the ranking stands. I just, um, you know, I already made clear my opinions about Christopher Nolan, so I, I, won't, I right. won't dig my hole any further because <laughs> I'm already going to get some bad comments. Fair enough. <laughs> Gentlemen, before we move on, is there anything that you would have liked to see on the list? There's a lot, but I know Eric and I agree on one. This is his major one. Yeah. Three billboards outside Ebbing's, Missouri. We're three for three for that one. I think that yeah. movie was fantastic. Phenomenal. Now, yeah. I Best understand why family. we wouldn't include it. Like, it doesn't come up on our Suggest page very much. Mm -hmm. Go to the Suggest page. Although, this one, the next one, number one, drum roll please, not exactly the most um, established director. Number one, Get Out. Yes. Yeah, oh, baby. Yeah. It's a great I, movie. I may have said, oh, I think uh, um, Logan should have been number one. I may have said that Three Billboards was the best movie I saw all year. But man, oh, man, was Get Out one of my favorite movies of the year. Mm -hmm. So good. What I appreciated about Get Out, I mean, you know, the social commentary was on the nose without hitting you over the head Constant. I mean, like the whole movie is essentially social commentary, but yeah, I never sure. felt like uh, they were hitting you over the head too hard with it. Yeah. But um, what I really liked was the, it, it was a very tight movie with a great story arc and a payoff that made sense that yeah. makes a second viewing better. Almost yeah, essential. Totally. Yeah, exactly. Almost yeah. essential, yeah. yeah. But it's, like, go ahead. Uh, yeah, it's funny you mentioned the ending because I read an article where I won't say what the. There's yeah, an alternate there's, ending. There's an the alternate way you ending. think it's going to go is the way exactly. it actually went in yeah. that alternate yeah. ending. So that conversation kind of ended very abruptly with no point. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> no, so but, it, was, but yeah. it is true because, you know, they. I think people were too disappointed uh, that it went there and, and they wanted to have an uplifting <sighs> yeah. feel. Are we not mature enough to, to handle the sad end? Not a sad ending, but that just like typical ending. Like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a bit disappointing if you think about it, but... Um, I also to grew assured. to like that character and was happy. Right. Uh, yeah, for sure. You know, the, the, I mean, uh, all credit has to go to Jordan Peele for for creating. What an incredible first movie! Like, what an incredible directorial debut! It, it, and especially because he's known for just being like this silly comedic, you know, genius, and then he comes out with the but best there was movie that, in, of the year. But there was that side of it that was, you know, the, there was the comic relief. For, oh, you know, for the sure. best friend. His buddy. Was yeah. So good in this movie. Yeah. And what's really interesting, actually, is that I saw an interview with uh, Allison Williams who said that um, still to this day, uh, she has to explain to people. Uh, that, that she was genuinely evil. Yeah, that her character was genuinely evil and, and wasn't like, um, you know, uh, kidnapped brainwashed. or brainwashed or. That's or what, at, at that scene where, not to give away too much, keys. but, sorry? The keys. Yeah, the keys. The keys. I, at, at that point, I was just like, you know what? I have some faith in humanity. Maybe she's being brainwashed into doing this, but no, yeah, you, no. in the interview, she's just straight up evil. I think but we, she was great in that movie, yeah. No, I think we've ruined the movie good and proper, though. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, sorry. That's okay. Um, yeah, like I said, I just, so I call this CSI syndrome. When you're watching mm -hmm. an episode of CSI, the setup to the murder 
is always like super interesting. You're like, how did this happen? Yeah. He's on top of a flagpole and what? <laughs> and like the explanation is always, so I killed him. And it's always yeah. like a big pfft. It's like, but oh, this okay. like, I thought, like I said at the very beginning of our little uh, blurb here is that like, I thought the payoff fit the rest and it was satisfactory. So yeah, for sure. And on that second viewing, you know, you start to pick up things, uh, you know, when the guy is talking about, well, I don't want to give too much away, yeah, but yeah. I, I just want to say that, like, this is a, a very multi-layered movie that doesn't feel too heavy. Like, it's, it's, it's a blast to watch, uh, and yet in there, there's a lot to chew on. So mm -hmm. if you're one of those people that likes to uh, say that you always see the twist coming, we challenge you to watch this movie and see. Yeah, and not out. totally. No, not after our spoiler. Not after full. our spoilers. Yeah, they were, they were okay. We I did. We, we did okay. We yeah. we drew outside the lines a bit, but yeah. like yeah. We're, we're, we still got a nice little color. Oh yeah, no, yeah, there's there's still a lot to to, to, yeah. to, to, to get do. out. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, it's time for us to get out. Get out of this video. <laughs> get out. Uh, one last thing I will do is give another shout out to PayPal for helping us produce this lovely discussion. Uh, check out PayPal's app. You can use that to shop the globe and transfer money worldwide. It's great. Uh, Eric, Matt, thank you so much for joining me on Deconstructed. Oh, okay. thanks for having us. Thank you. And uh, until next time, everybody. This video has been brought to you by PayPal. This holiday sees the season at millions of online retailers. Shop the globe today. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.